the um, last video I did it. If I get time, there's a few more things I'd like to share, but uh, that went for about 30 minutes. So, it's things that have happened in the last few days which have been amazing to see. But before I actually come to that, I'd like for a moment to discuss the patterns of this reality. Now basically if you take the Bible, which is like a screenplay, disregard the details of the historical settings, and actually look at the story. Now I'll give you an example, and this is something that you're probably do every day without even a second thought about it. Take your cell phone, your mobile phone, a device. Now, assume that it is on standby mode. You know that the battery is good, it has sufficient charge in it, and you know you have a connection, so it's good to go. I wish I had a second device here so I could actually show this, but um, just you'll have to do this in your mind. But if you imagine you take your device in your left hand and it's got a black screen, now you move your right hand over it and activate it and the, the lighting of the back screen comes up and now you've got form on the screen. So basically, what you have reenacted is Genesis. You've, you haven't actually created the mobile phone. You've created the desire to have one and then have got one. But now you play out the... It's a, a faceless void. And then God moves across the surface, as it were, and then you... You basically say, let there be light, and you, you switch it on, and it comes into being. So you've basically got that Genesis story. Another example would be the story of Jesus goes into the temple and upsets the tables of the money lenders. Now, leaving aside the literal of money lenders, think of it as the material world those that are trying to sell you the ideas of the material world. So you come along maybe as a, shall we say, a conspiracy theorist, and you're putting forward something, an alternative explanation. So you're upsetting the, mon the money lenders' tables. In other words, you're upsetting the balance in their minds. So you're playing out that part. And you'll probably get, as it were, um, what's the word? You'll get sort of crucified for it in a, in a sort of, so to speak, by those that are having to defend their belief, their system. They're playing the parts of the rabbis. So that's basically, in the Bible, you have this screenplay and then it is just played out. So it starts as a spiritual history. And then it is externalized into the material world. And it just keeps playing out and playing out over and over again. It's a living God, shall we say, we use that label, that resides inside each of us. That is dreaming that same dream. And these physical bodies are acting it out. The world is a stage. So that if you you'll see that pattern over and over again in a conversation earlier today, uh, to give you another example of this reality and it's the isometric markers and the palindromic um, things that you can see in it. It really is seek and you shall find. So if you are looking for these sort of things, you will be presented with them. Um, as an example of that, you may just go onto YouTube and it said, and it'll have a part saying recommended to you. And there may well be something 
that catches your eye, it's the topic you've been thinking about and somehow you now have a response by electronic means that responds to your thoughts. So one ready example and that came up in a conversation earlier, the year 1902. Now if I go 54 years back, you've got revolution in Leipzig in 1848. So I'd then be looking 54 years after 1902 to find something similar, and sure enough there is. We're looking for something that's basically a revolution and happening in Europe. Well, the Hungary uprising in 1956, that's 54 years. So there's an example of the cyclical nature. If you can find an isometric marker and you go so many years one side, you will probably find a very similar event played out the other side of whatever the marker year is. It's just a case of finding an event and then looking for something similar and then halving the, the distance in years between the two. Now a square peg divergent has said it's not an exact science and we are looking just for similar events, not exact mirror copies. So there may be a train crash in in one year, the isometric, the other side of that isometric marker year, it may be a near miss, not actually a train crash at all. But it will be something on those sort of lines. Excuse the pun when we're talking about railways, <laughs> railway lines and all that. Um, where else do we want to go with this? This is a little series of bits. Ah, yes, let's get on to... In the last few days, and I, I take from this, I'm not going to talk about details or specifics. It's not fair on the people involved. Um, but it's the broader picture of all this. So, an event happens in your life that changes things. That you've now, you're now prevented, for whatever reason, from doing something. So, it, it now looks like, oh... I have a problem, I have an obstacle to overcome. But when one door closes, another one opens. And in this particular case I'm thinking of, it was a self-manifested event by a thought or a desire that's put out. So the external has responded. Now it will because of our negative default programming by the system, it is very easy to look at the, the change as, oh, I have this obstacle to overcome. I can't do this, I can't do that, and compare with the past when you could. But, it's now looking for, well, what has it freed and allowed to come through that if that hadn't happened, couldn't come through. If I'm told something that would appear to be negative, it's very easy to fall into the being sympathetic, as it were, and saying, oh, poor you, which is actually confirming and reinforcing that feeling in that the person concerned. You're confirming it, and I'm not saying don't be sympathetic, but with those good intentions, it it's not actually helping. It's now a case of, okay, let's weigh up the information I've now been presented. Let's look for where there's a positive. And I, so I was able to say, well, yes, that has happened, and from your own words, you've actually created it, which a lot of people don't want to hear that. But it doesn't stop there. It's like, yes, but because that has happened, it's allowing, it's freed you up 
and given you new opportunities to do this or that. See, this is the way we need to look at things. If you're seeing something as a problem, something that is presented to you, this is where you need to sort of go inside yourself and you'll probably find that you actually created it. And you have a response from the external. Bear in mind it works like the subcon subconscious. It doesn't distinguish good or bad. It is not the respecter of personalities. But it will present you something. And if you can see past the negative and find the positive in it, it opens up something new. Another example of this would be the loss of a pet. You have that experience of grieving. But consider what is the role of the pet, as say it uh, be a cat or a dog. They're like a guardian spirit that has been sent to help you and stay with you for a certain amount of time and to guide you and assist you and give you extra sensory perception to the, the sense range of a dog or a cat, for example. But because so much happens in the unseen, so we're not aware of it, Often, what is described as an untimely death of, a, of a, a pet will seem tragic. But consider that the, in the unseen aspect of this, what has actually happened is that cat or dog has basically self-sacrificed themselves to protect you. Now, if you can view it in that way and realise that wow, that cat or dog really loved me, they were prepared to give up their own life as a demonstration of how much they love me. When you see it from that perception, does that not straight away feel a better experience rather than being totally in the grieving, the feeling of loss? It bring, I feel it brings it back more into balance of, yes, you have to have the experience of the grieving and the loss. You wouldn't be human if you didn't have that. You wouldn't have a heart if you didn't feel that. But if you can see the, I know it doesn't look like there's one, but if you can see the positive, that they have given their life up to protect you or to help you in some way that you can't see, that is the ultimate unconditional love and that I feel is something that is a great honour to, to be given a gift like that, that you have a being, a cat or a dog or whatever the animal from the animal world it is, that they're prepared and have gone through and seen it right through. <coughs> Incidentally, I had a download, as it were, in the shower on the topic of water, and it got me thinking about, in particular, dogs, but also cows and wolves, and probably many other creatures, how their noses are wet. Well, water being an amplifier, you think about animals at work often work on the information field of scent so that water by having a wet nose that is amplifying the incoming signal that they're getting so what are we up to nearly 15 minutes so there's a few pointers there um i did some healing as well as sort of trying to change percep perception and it's unblock un clearing blockages and saying well look even you outwardly you're displaying um this and i, I was able to point out the vi the visual because when we allow these conscious 
problems, what we perceive as problems, they do have an effect on the body that starts causing blockages. So you get this thing called pain. It's the only way the body can communicate back to the brain to alert you that there is a problem. The body will always know ahead of the conscious, lower conscious mind, for example. It's all about the communication, how we communicate and how we receive that communication from the body. We're trained to, oh, I've got a pain, and see it in the negative way, rather than doing it of, ah, I have a pain. That's telling me something. I need to look into this more. It's just language, it's just perception, it's labels, it's fixing things to specific times and dates and history. The devil's in the detail. That always look at the broader picture on these things. If you're presented with a negative, consider that this reality is like a mirror, so there will be another reflection, a reflection of what you perceive as negative. There will be a positive to find. It's just whether we can become the observer and then able to see, oh, well, there's the negative, I can see that one. Now, where's the positive? Can I find that? Ah, now I've brought it back into balance again because I can see the negative and the positive and I can weigh it up. And it also takes the sting out of the negative because if you purely focus on the negative, you'll work like a magnet on a negative polarity and you will draw more negativity from that, which is really the last thing that we wish to do to ourselves, but it is from those thoughts that we create, especially if they're negative ones, that is going to give us a less positive outplay from that event. So this is why we need to be always be in balance, be observer, be in the present. Because if something has happened, even if it's recent, it's already in the past. So you're now comparing back to the past. So you need to say, okay, that's happened. I acknowledge that has happened, but no, now we're right back in the, the moment again. How do we go from here? So I would start with, right, there's the negative. So I need to look for its equivalent counterpart positive. Because we're in a realm of duality. You, won't, you can't have light without darkness. You can't have darkness without light. It's in a balance. But if we focus too far on the spectrum one side, we'll only see the ne negative and we'll totally miss the positive. And we definitely won't find the path that is neutral between all of it. Right, we're up to 18 minutes now, so... There's a few little bits and pieces in there that I feel are worth weighing up inside oneself because that is where it all has to be done. It's not a case of I give you the answers. I cannot give you the answers. I can only point to phenomenon. I can only give you examples of the outplay of the things. But I can hopefully help shift your perspective so you're not seeing it through the filters of negativity and see it in a more neutral light, as it were, and then be able to find that positive in it. So I'm going to say love to you all, and uh, I hope this has given you a new perspective, a new way of finding your way through things, because... I could aim this at specific people, but not just one person. I could aim this to quite a few people just lately. But then I also have to weigh up and consider in that, if I'm present, being presented with all this, why am I being presented with it? Is there something in me, or is this because I put out a wish that I wish to help people, and I wish to be presented with opportunities to express a message? And I feel from doing... You're asking me the internal questions. That's why these things have come. I have played a part in their manifestations. And initially it may not look to be good outcomes. Um, 
the road to hell is always paved with good intentions. I, just as a final note, I've, I'm as guilty as, as this as everybody else. With the good intentions, you want to go out and fix the world with the information that you've got. And the, the sort of topics you would get banned for even saying on some of these things, but you'll know exactly what I mean. So you want to go and share it with the world, make them aware, but of course they're not listening and then it's frustrating. So far better to sort of come back in oneself and it's like, hmm, it ain't working that way, so how else can we do it? So we just say things in different ways and have new perceptions, new ways of looking at things and showing the... Uh, nature of this reality and the interact interactivity of this nature with ourselves and how our thoughts really do create this reality so i'm going to say love to you all and have a beautiful beautiful day